To begin today's meeting, I'm very pleased to introduce Taikan Oki, professor at the University of Tokyo, to introduce us to the Earth's water cycle in the Anthropocene. Please join me in welcoming him on stage. So good morning, everybody. Okay, it's my best honor to have an opportunity to share with you that some ideas that the, about the uh, water cycle in the Anthropocene, that which I have been studying for more than three decades. And let me start from this figure, that the, the left uh, Earth is somewhat strange for you, is and uh, all the water on the Earth were squeezed into the sphere, and that size will be that the big, big blue drop, and that that is only that the uh, all water in and above the Earth, but the middle one is that the liquid water on the Earth, and that is estimated to be the 0.8 percent. Of course, that the solid water is also the more than 1% of the total water on the Earth. But the fresh water in lakes and rivers, are like uh, this is made that by the USGS that 0.007%, but the normal figure could be that like the 0.01%. But anyway, that as you see this, that the water is not so much abundant on the Earth, and uh, in a sense, is the Earth is plated by water. Only the surface is covered by water. And majority of the Earth is iron, so that Earth is not an, a planet of water, but it's a planet of iron. However, as you see the right animation, it's a, a mid-infrared sensor observed uh, by the meteorological uh, geostationary satellite, that if we, you can see that the water vapor, then Earth is covered by water, water vapor. So that the, not the existence of the water, but the water cycle put the lives on the Earth. So that water cycle matters for us. And let's, uh, this is a diagram uh, is, uh, introduced in the uh, first IPCC. IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Uh, the report that the uh, climate system, and uh, it's nearly 40 years ago, and uh, there is interaction between atmosphere and ocean, atmosphere land, but the, I would complain on this diagram, there's no water cycle, and no river, no groundwater, illustrated in this diagram. So even though that from the first uh, climate simulation by the Tsuki Manabe, who got the Nobel Prize in physics last year, from the beginning that the ozone, carbon dioxide, and water vapor, these are the critical components to simulate the climate. However, in this diagram, water vapor is of course included, but no water cycle in it. Okay, then uh, I was in, uh, interesting, very much curious to know that how the water circulates on the Earth. And uh, at that time, that no precipitation digital data set of the globe, no evapotranspiration was estimated. However, for the weather forecast, that the water vapor movement data set was evolving. So I used that data set and estimate that atmospheric water balance and the color diagram illustrates that the blue purse is that the water vapor conversions. That means that precipitation is more than evaporation. That is uh, located in the tropics and in the subtropics arid region. That the reddish color indicates that the water vapor divergence. That means that the evapotranspiration, evaporation is more than precipitation. So but the, I was a little bit uncomfortable to see that there are some negative uh, conversions. That means that the overland, that precipitation is less than evaporation. What's happening? Let me illustrate a little bit more 
uh, schematic diagram that the ordinary land on the left, that the, there is the precipitation, and portion of the precipitation evaporates or that transpirates from plants. Then residual becomes runoff. Therefore, that if we take the column of the atmosphere, the incoming water vapor is more than the outgoing water vapor, okay? So that is the ordinary water balance of a land. However, as I show you in the last slide, there are some part of the world where the vapor going out is more than vapor going in. That suggests there are some water is evolving over land. Over the ocean, it can be acceptable. However, what's happening over the land? So at that time, we are not sure about it. Okay, and uh, <laughs> switch to that modeling study that the, in the 20th century, hydrology, which deal with the uh, water cycle on the Earth, which was mainly using that knowledge for that the design flood or the real-time prediction drought or the water cycles. And uh, it was a very much engineering-oriented discipline. However, uh, it's not only myself or our group, but the, a few groups in the world, we have been developing that the global hydrology framework, which employs the remote sensing or the numerical weather prediction or the future climate change predictions to using the, and separate that model into land surface part and river part and not only concentrate on that river discharge, but the soil moisture, groundwater, evapotranspiration, carbon dioxide, source or sink, all these uh, components has been uh, paid attention to simulate. And now that can be used for the monitoring floods or that the warning or that climate change prediction or the impact studies. Then, uh, we could have been successfully estimate the global water cycle and the uh, water balance on the Earth. And uh, this diagram, diagram illustrates that the how much precipitation, precipitation is the rainfall and mainly snowfall, and uh, evaporation over ocean, that is the ma majority of the water exchange. And uh, at that time, I was very much curious, for example, that the do you know that how much snowfall among the total precipitation on the earth? Nobody told me, so that the, we investigated maybe approximately 10% of the precipitation falls as snow, or that the how much runoff which generate in, in a hill slope are the direct runoff that which rainfalls and uh, immediately come to river, or the ones penetrate into that groundwater and gradually coming into the stream. That is one to two. And at that time, we could not estimate that how much direct runoff from groundwater to the ocean. But the, in this diagram, maybe that historically important point is we included that water use by human beings in this diagram. So in the past, natural science has been pursuing that the natural system and human beings were excluded from that the scope. However, we included that, and, uh, th but the one big regret is that uh, we excluded artificial reservoir uh, in this diagram. Now we know that there could be the 11,000 cubic kilometers of the water can be stored in artificial reservoirs, but that was excluded from this diagram. And at that time, we knew, uh, we didn't know this article about the uh, uh, Curtin that who was the Nobel Prize laureate in chemistry found about the ozone hole mechanism pr uh, proposed the terminology Anthropocene. And uh, I didn't know, I did not know about it, but the, we have been thinking, oh, real nature in the modern era is not natural or pristine anymore. So we have to uh, include the human activities in the scope of the natural science. And at least for the environmental science, we have to. Then 
Uh, my best colleague that the Naoto Hanasaki now he is in the National Institute for Environmental Studies, who developed that hum uh, numerical simulation model which have that the natural water cycle and uh, human activities in it, like that reservoir operation or the groundwater pumping or that the irrigation withdrawal to the cropland. Then, uh, this is uh, some example of an application of such a study, and the uh, important point of this diagram is there are some places in uh, the uh, western India that a lot of groundwater are used. And uh, that is a modeling study. However, that other estimate done by that uh, NASA group and uh, Matt Rodell and Jay Famigliaretti that the, they're observing Earth by these two satellite, constellation satellite, and measuring the very tiny difference change of that, the distance in between, we can estimate that gravity. That is converted into mass of the Earth. Then we can detect the change over the total water storage change, and that is translated into that like the glacier melting or the change of the groundwater depletion. And here, that the right figure is about that the uh, groundwater depletion is uh, observed by the satellite gravity measurement. And left figure is about the modeling study to estimate that groundwater depletion. So both studies suggest there could be a lot of the groundwater depletion in this region. And now we know, okay, that the atmospheric water balance told me that there is a lot of the evaporation, more than precipitation over land that can be understood like that, okay, not only the precipitation, but the groundwater pumping and also that the withdrawal of river water to the crop plant can make more water available to be evaporated. And that was detected by the global scale observation. So that, of course, that in a regional scale, we, can, we see a lot of the impacts of human activities. However, even on the global scale, we Okay, maybe due to that the advancement of the observation and also the modeling accuracy, but we can sense what we are putting the pressure on the uh, water cycle, even on a global scale. Then, now, the last year that the IPCC report, uh, latest one was released, and the human activity was included in the diagrams, so that you see that big difference comparing the 40 years ago of their perception on climate and nowadays. And uh, personally, I was relieved to see that our estimate published in 2006 is still within the error bar of the latest estimates. However, for that the storage term, that there are the big uh, diver, I mean, the uncertainty still we have. For example, that the soil moisture have that the 54,000 cubic meter of the storage. However, that is has the 90% of the uncertainty. That's quite big. And groundwater, 80%. And uh, saline lakes, 90% uncertainty. So, young guys, so there are still a lot of that uh, unknowns, even on the water on the Earth. But here, I'd like to point out another one important thing, that using the groundwater and the fossil groundwater, what, which were not on the water cycle on the Earth, will be put on the surface water cycle, will rise the sea level. But on the contrary, that's they're using, uh, making the reservoirs and impounding that the water in reservoirs will suppress the water level and which uh, effect overcome then what will happen in the future. That is given here that also that from the IPCC report that the, in the past, it seems that suppressing the sea level rise by that the storing water in reservoirs prevailed. However, for the future, maybe not so much reservoirs will be constructed instead, 
we will use more water from groundwater and it will put a little bit uh, increase on the sea level, like a three centimeter in the uh, future. Okay, the final remarks that we could have dramatically improved our knowledge on the Earth water cycle in the Anthropocene. And it's a real water cycle on the planet. And uh, maybe you have a question that, okay, then what will happen? We still have a lot of uncertainties about the current uh, water cycle and future projection of the water cycle. However, that now we're pursuing that interaction between the water cycle and the social, social uh, change so that the socio-hydrology is now evolving and we think that more integrated study will be needed for the future. Thank you very much for your attention.